We've already set up our colliders when we went through the ragdoll wizard. And detecting collision is not that difficult. I'm going to go into character control. And I'm going to use a method called on trigger enter. This is a callback function that happens whenever something touches or enters one of our ragdoll body parts. And whichever collider that triggered this function, we want to make sure that it's not part of the player's own body part. So if it's not contained, or if it's contained in the ragdoll parts list, don't want to do anything, so just return. We also want to make sure that it has a character control attached to the root or the top of the hierarchy. If the character control is null, it means it's not a player, it's just a physical object. So again, do nothing. Now at this point, if this collider has passed these two tests, it's something from another character. But we want to make sure that it's not the box collider itself, the one at the top of the hierarchy. So the game object of the collider. If it's the same game object as the character control, Again, we do nothing. Now after passing all these tests, we now know that the collider is a body part from another player. I'm going to go up and create a list. I'm going to call it colliding parts. And this is where we're going to store all the character body parts that comes in contact. So I'm going to go down. If the collider is not already included in the list, then we simply add it. Okay. I'm going to create a similar method on trigger exit. This means that the collider is no longer touching our player. So if it's included in the list, then we remove it. Oh, here, we want to add if the list does not include the collider. Okay. If I go back to Unity and click Play, so here's our dummy character. And right now the colliding parts is empty because no other character is touching it. But if I go ahead and start punching, whenever a body part from another character starts touching, it's going to get added to this list. So here we have the left hand of the player. And as you can see, it's inside the trigger. If I unpause, and go back to the dummy. If it's not touching, then it's not included in the list. So all we got to do now is trigger a death animation whenever the punch is detected. But I think I'm going to do that in the next video. For the rest of this video, I'm going to organize and rewrite some of the code. First, let me go back to character control. And I want to rename this to be a little more specific, skinned skinned mesh animator. And if I save, I'm going to get a bunch of error messages in Unity. I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to fix the name, skinned mesh animator. Save and go back, should be fixed. Okay. If I look at the prefab, the animator is empty. We just got to drag it in again because it's a new variable with a new name. And same thing with the dummy. Drag in the animator and click apply. Apply. And I'm going to save the scene. I also want to go into move forward.
And here, I don't like copy pasting the move script. So I'm going to copy it and bring it to character control. Here, I'm going to create a public method called move forward. And I'm going to paste it in here. Get rid of this because it's already character control. And we just got to pass on the parameter speed and the speed graph. Get rid of this. Save. Go back to move forward. And instead of this long line of code, we can just say move forward and pass on the parameters. Okay, and we can get rid of this line. I'm going to copy this code into the other ones as well. Right movement and left movement. It's the exact same code. I'm just going to click play, make sure that it works. Okay, looks good. I'm going to go back to the character control and I want another public method for turning the player. I want to call it face forward, bull forward. And whenever this is called, if forward is true, we want the character to face the forward direction. Meaning if I look at the character, this side will be the forward, this side will be the back. So rotation is going to be Cortanian Euler angles, and it's going to be zero, zero, zero. If not, it means we're facing the other way. The rotation is going to be 180 degrees on the y-axis and zero on the rest. Okay. And in the beginning, I want to call that function face forward, just to make sure that the rotation is zero. If I go back and play, everything should be exactly the same, except I just want to make sure that this stays zero. But if I want to make the dummy face the other way in the scene view, and if I click play, it's just going to turn back. So we want to fix that. I'm going to go into character control. And I want a method that tells you whether the character is facing forward or not. So bull is facing forward. And I'm going to take a look at the transformation rotation. Oh no, I'm going to look at the forward. If I go back, this blue arrow here is the forward. And if the z-axis of this arrow is positive, meaning it's here, it's facing forward. If the z is facing this way, it's a negative value, which means it's facing the other way. So I'm going to say if z is bigger than zero, that means the character is facing the the right side, return true, if not, return false. So I'm going to go to awake and say switch back is false, but if the character is already facing the other way, oops, if the character is facing the other way, I want the character to be, I want the character to switch back. But I want it to switch after the setup process. So if switch back is true, we want the character to start facing the other way, which is false. Okay. If I go back and play, let me look at the dummy. I think everything looks good. 
I'm going to turn on the manual control just to check. And everything seems to be fine. Turn it off. Test the punch. Okay, I'm going to exit play mode. I also want to change this name, General Idle. And I think that's it for today. So in the next video, we're going to start making the death animation. Thanks for watching.